Okay, hi everyone. So this is our inertial cutoff switch. Uh, we have a big box full of these guys uh, that we were able to buy the entire lot. These actually we bought from from a uh, police department, and they were going to install them in all their cruisers. And uh, then for whatever reason, uh, they collected dust instead, and then I was able to buy the lot. So when they're gone, they're gone, but they're brand new. Uh, that's the first thing to say about them. They're brand new. Um, they're originally spec by Ford. They're the kind that we like because there's this nice, easy way two-hole mounting flange. If you look on eBay and you see some of the other inertial cutoff switches and stuff that are out there for fuel systems, they'll, some of them have weird, you know, they're meant for specific applications, so they're not easy to just kind of mount universally. These are, uh, in addition, you come with a nice pigtail, shrink-wrapped, two-conductor wire, jacketed wire, um, about 12 to 16 feet. Um, so you're ready to go and hook this thing up. Uh, the way you actually hook this up and use it is um, you're just taking these two wires and you're interrupting the best place to use it and you can check out the schematics that will be posted in this product as well. But the best way to do it is not to interrupt the actual fuel pump circuit itself uh, with this uh, because it's too, much, too, too high of a current, but to do it the same way that the OEMs do it, which is to interrupt the ground leg of the fuel pump relay. So you're just interrupting the amount of coil is very little. The amount of current is very little. It's just the amount that's driving the coil of the relay that's then driving the pump. Um, so it'll function just as if it was interrupting the pump itself, um, except it'll last a lot longer, and so will all the wires. So the way it works is there's this kind of like marble-like thing in here along with some contacts, and if it gets jarred or hit hard enough, it breaks the contact. So then the fuel, relay, fuel pump relay is off, and then the fuel pump as a result, of course, is off. And then if you've just driven over a curb or something like this uh, and you need to reset it, you just click that, and then you're good to go again. Um, it can also be useful... If you're doing like a compression test or something like this, you can smack it and that'll turn the fuel pump off so you're not pumping in fuel while you're doing, you know, whatever it is you're messing around with. Um, that's something that a lot of techs used to use it for and stuff as well. Um, but anyway, um, actually you could even use it as a, like an anti-theft. If you smacked it and walked away from the car and someone trying to steal the car doesn't know to reset this thing, they're not going to be able to steal the car. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty useful thing to have. The idea is... Uh, if you are unfortunate enough to be in some kind of an accident or a rollover and there's a fuel system breach, well, as long as the key is on, chances are, even if the thing is upside down or on its side, that the fuel pump is still running. And if there's been a breach, then you're probably pumping the, the contents of the gas tank out onto the street, um, which is going to make things exponentially worse for the situation. So that's the idea of having one of these. Um, one caveat is... If you're in an off-road application, you're going to want to install a bypass as well because this can be just as equally dangerous in an off-road situation. Say you're on Truck Hill in Hollister, which is a very steep, long hill. Um, if you lose power anywhere along that hill and the vehicle starts to go backwards, you could roll all the way down and take yourself out that way. That would be a bad time to have this without a bypass switch so that you know, the fuel pump is always going to be on. Um, just because if you lose power in the middle of that, you could cause yourself the problem to begin with. So keep that in mind if you're using it in uh, an off-road situation, that you want to install a bypass for the, <laughs> the inertial cutoff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's an it's a easy, uh, easy amount switch. It's a great deal. Like I said, we've got just the one box of these. So as many as we've got listed, we've got listed, and then they're gone. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a little extra peace of mind. Um, and hopefully you'll never have to use it. Um, but also we'll let, t we'll let Tommy boy demonstrate what, what you can avoid if you pick one of these up. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, daddy. Not now, damn it. Truck tire. Eh, I can't stop. Oh, ah, help. There's a cliff. Oh, and your family screaming, oh my god, we're burning alive! No, I can't feel my legs! In comes a meat wagon! Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. And the medic gets out and says, oh my god! New guy's in the corner puking his guts out. <laughs> All because you want to save a couple extra pennies. <laughs> and to me, it doesn't... Get out. Now! Sir... <laughs> Do you validate? No. 